Okay, so let's have a look here, guys. Um, so for number one, what substance is embedded in the cell walls and supports the stem of a plant? Lignin. Yep, exactly. Okay, that's the stuff we're looking for right there. Okay, what structures control water loss from the leaves? I'll accept two things here. Guard cells, or guard cells make up a stoma, stomates, yeah. Okay, so if they have guard cells, stomates, okay, stoma, all right, that's good enough. That's the stuff that controls the water loss, okay, actually controls it, okay. There's something else that prevents it, okay, but those actually open and close and do the controlling. Okay, a root system that spreads out far but not deep is a fibrous root system. Number four, a single deep root is called a tap root system. Okay, sugar produced by a plant is transported in the phloem. Blank pressure is produced in water vacuoles and helps support a plant. Turger pressure. Okay. Number seven, in the leaf, photosynthesis occurs mainly in what layer? Palisade layer. Number eight, in the leaf, water is stored in the spongy layer. And last one, water transport uses these two behaviors of water. Cohesion for one mark, adhesion for one mark. No, because there's two types of mesophyll. Yeah. He's got it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so give him a mark out of 10, guys. Let him see it. Put it in the box. On your way, grab a Chromebook. Okay. Okay. Plan for today, guys, is going to work like this. We're going to be setting up our transport and plants lab. So we'll do all the preamble stuff, talk about the lab report, all of that. Okay, that'll take 20 minutes to a half an hour. Uh, and then we can't really do much more for that, okay, because the plants have to sit in the sun for a couple of days in order for the rest of the lab to work. Um, so my plan is this. I've assigned you a fair amount of work over the last week. The remainder of class will be yours to work on that work. Okay, because I can't get done the lecture that I have to do that's kind of next in line in the time that we have. So, okay, you're going to get some time today to work on this. Tomorrow and Thursday, we'll be starting your plant research thing, which is already on the board there. Um, but, okay, you'll have tomorrow and Thursday to work on that, but it won't be due until the 24th of April. So you got, unfortunately, bio is kind of that way. There's two things you can do in bio. Have me stand at the front and talk all class, which is boring for both of us, okay? And you got to do some, you know, hands-on kind of stuff, right? That's why we're doing so many labs, is that it's good to do hands-on stuff as much as we can, okay? Um, so, for today, we'll start this Transport in Plants lab. If you go to Google Classroom, it's the latest thing in the stream, okay? So go there and open it up. I'm not even giving you a lab sheet this time, all right? Just because I'm, uh, well, the provincial budget came down yesterday. And, yeah, okay, and it was not good for education which we kind of expected. So you don't get any paper anymore. Okay, yeah, we got to kind of cut the big photocopy and budget a lot. Yeah, okay, so since we can do this digitally, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, you don't like it? Write your MLA and tell them there should be more money in education so I can kill trees for you. Okay, that's how the system is supposed to work. I don't know that that's actually how it works, but it's how it's supposed to work. Okay. Oh, by the way, your MLA is also no longer what's her pickle? Um, Smith, yeah, her. She got ousted. Someone else is in charge now. So, yeah. Last week, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she changed sides, right? Yeah, she went over from the Wild Rose to the PC. Leader of the opposition goes to Flunky, yeah, and then gets ousted on top of that. So, see, there's no there's no advantage to treason. Okay. Yeah. All right, so here's what we got. 
the problem that we're investigating. Okay, the problem we're investigating is that scientists marvel at the ability of plants to raise water many meters above the ground, particularly since it is done with no apparent expenditure of energy. Okay, now we've talked about how plants do this. We kind of know that. What's the main process that we believe is involved? Osmosis. Okay, this difference in salt concentrations caused by the evaporation of water from the leaves pulls pulls the water up. So the problem we're investigating here is what are the forces that move water through plants? Okay, in this activity we're going to investigate that question. Now a lot of people for a very long time figured that plants somehow had some sort of pumping mechanism that was in the bottom of the plant that moved water up. Okay, and that was kind of the belief for a long time. And there's to a certain extent a very small amount of pressure that's osmotic in nature generated by the roots, but it's not significant. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to prove that the only source of pulling force is the leaves. Okay, and that it's the osmotic pressure produced in the leaves. How are we going to do that? We're going to alter the plant. In other words, we're manipulating its structure a little bit by cutting off its roots. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these plants here and we're going to cut pieces off so that all we have is the leaf and some of the stem. Okay? In doing so, we remove the roots as a source of forces that can move the water. Agreed? Okay, so we're, we're changing the plant structure a little bit in order to eliminate it, the other structures being a source of the movement of water. What we're going to do is a little bit like probably what you did in grade 5 with a celery stalk. Right? Your teacher probably put a piece of celery in some food coloring water and the celery changed color over a couple of days. If you didn't do that, you really missed out. Okay. We're kind of doing that, all right? except we're not using celery. We're using these plants. And unfortunately, Walmart did not have a good selection of plants last night when I went to get them. Um, so yeah, it was... Uh, did Canadian, Canadian Tire have better? Okay, I'll maybe have a look there. Okay. Um, ew. That's not part of the plant. What the heck is that? Well, it's not alive, whatever it is. Okay, so we've got a few different plants. Now, I always try and pick plants that have as variegated of, of leaves as possible. That means they've got lots of colors in them. Okay, uh, as much white as possible because we're going to put food coloring in the water so that as it moves through the plant, we can find out where exactly it's going. Okay. So we're going to have dyed water, okay, fairly dyed with the food coloring, and over the course of a few days, we should be able to track its movement through the plant. Right? Where are you going to see the most evidence of movement of water within here? When you, yeah, you're probably going to see a fair change of color in the stem, because th at least this stem is quite fleshy. The uh, stem of this plant is a little less fleshy. Okay? But could you also see some in the leaves? Okay. Do we kind of know the path of water, like it goes through the xylem, it gets into the leaves? What layer does it go into after that? It goes into the spongy layer, and water evaporates out through the, through the stomates. Okay. So is that kind of where the food coloring will have to stop? It is, right? Because the food coloring can't evaporate. The water will evaporate, but the food coloring should get left behind, just like the salts do. All right? Everyone with me? Because food coloring, the dye, is kind of a, kind of a solute. Okay, so it'll dissolve in there, but when the water leaves, the dye will be left behind. So we should actually, hopefully, be able to see in a few days little tiny spots on the bottom of the leaf indicating where the food coloring could no longer go. Okay, it had to stop at the stomate. So hopefully we'll see that. Usually we do, but again, I was only able to get one of the plant I usually get because that was all they had. So we're experimenting with some new ones. They're pretty white though, so hopefully we'll see okay, a fair amount of that water movement. Okay, so we already talked a little bit here in design. Okay, we're manipulating something about the plant. Um, there's two things that we're going to watch for okay, in this lab. Two things that are going to hopefully respond to what we do. We talked about one of them. We're looking at, yeah, the movement, right? We, we should be able to see where the food coloring goes. We're kind of watching that, okay? If, if there's no change in color anywhere in the plant, then we're obviously way off on something, okay? The other thing is, is we're going to have these sitting in a graduated cylinder. That's that kind of funny looking thing you use to measure liquid in. And we're going to measure how much water is in there at the beginning and again at the end. Hopefully there should be less at the end. If there's more, you need to go to Hogwarts.
because you performed a magic trick somehow. Okay, there should be less. Okay, when we're all done this lab, right? And that's also a variable that should um, respond to what we're doing. Okay, controlled variables. Anything here that could affect how a plant moves water affects how a plant could grow, carry out photosynthesis. Any of those things have to be controlled. All right. I don't want to have, let's say, for example, uh, my plant sitting uh, part of the time in the in the sunshine, and part of the time in the dark. Okay, like a, you know, I don't want to during the day put it in the prep room. Okay, and at night put it in the window because then it's probably not going to move very much water. Okay, things like that. So anything that could affect how your plant transports water needs to be controlled somehow, and you should probably explain that when you're identifying your controlled variables. All right, for our hypothesis, if, and, and then statements. Okay, the if part should probably talk about what we think is responsible for moving water in a plant. Okay, so if a plant uses blah, blah, blah. Okay, the and part, again, briefly describe the experiment. In the then part, you should tell me a little bit about the appearance of your plant at the end of the experiment, and a little bit about the water volume at the end of the experiment. Now, the procedure for this lab is crucial. You must follow the instructions exactly. If you don't, the lab will not work quite right. Okay? So you're going to be working towards having an experimental apparatus okay, that looks like this at the end. So you'll have a couple of leaves, okay, a fairly long piece of stem, and that will be in the water in your graduated cylinder. All right, so that's kind of what we're headed towards is a setup that looks somewhat like this. Okay? Now, in order to do that and to make it work, okay, we're going to select some leaves okay, off of the plant. And we're going to cut them off. But when we cut them off, we have to make sure we do that underwater. So the front sink in the lab will be full and the plants will be sitting in it. All right, pots and everything, they'll be in the water. You need to make the cut underwater, and then you need to put your thumb over the cut end. Okay? The reason is, we don't want any air to get in the xylem. If it does, it'll disrupt the whole process we think is going on in there, which is cohesion, adhesion, those hydrogen bonds. If any air bubbles get in there, it'll interrupt the process. So we want to do our best to eliminate that by covering up the end of the plant after we've cut it. Okay, you take it over to your experimental apparatus and very quickly put it in the water. Everyone got me there? Okay, it is crucial that it is cut underwater and the end is covered for as much as possible. All right, setting up the, uh, the apparatus itself. So you can see here, that's my picture of someone cutting that underwater. Okay, sort of worked. Okay, now, the way you're going to set up the apparatus here is that we're going to have the um, kind of medium-sized graduated cylinders, okay, for the plants to sit in, not the really big ones, not the really small ones. Um, the problem with the graduated cylinders is the measurement lines only go about three-quarters of the way up. And we're going to need to fill this thing all the way to the top. Okay? Because if we don't, the stem might not be in the water after two days. So we want it filled almost straight to the top. Not quite, because when we stick the stem in, what's going to happen to the water? Right, so you displace some when you put the plant in. So leave enough room so that when you put your plant in, you don't lose any water. The key here is this. I'm going to fill the big ones, they're about 100 mils, up to the 100 mil mark. Put the food coloring in, okay, stir it up, get it all mixed in, and then I'm going to pour that into the smaller graduated cylinder so that it is filled probably to right about there. All right, that'll give enough room for the displacement of the water when I put my plant in. How am I going to know how much water I put in there? Exactly. How much is left in the 100 mil graduated cylinder? That's why we need two graduated cylinders. We need to have one where we know exactly how much water there is, so when we pour out of it to fill the other, we know how much we've put in there. All right? And that's a number we have to record because that's our initial volume of water. It's one of the things we're watching. Okay? How much water is the plant going to move over the course of two days? Okay? Does everyone follow on that? All right, so let's say when I'm done all this, I've got uh, 46 mils left in here. How much water did I put in? 
No, I have 46 mils left. I put in 54, right? Okay, so that's what you have to do. Simple calculation, right? Okay, that you'll record that as your initial volume of water. Once you have the water in there, filled to about there, then I'm going to give you the finger off of a rubber glove. Okay, and you are going to put that over the top of the graduated cylinder to seal it. Okay, because we don't want to have the whole graduated cylinder open because then water will just evaporate out of the cylinder. We only want the water to evaporate out of the plant. So you're going to put that um, piece of rubber glove over the top, okay, and then you're going to poke a small hole in it with your pencil, okay, a really small hole. Then you will force the plant through that hole. We don't want to make the hole too big, okay, we want it to sort of seal around the stem of the plant as much as possible. Okay, so then you, once you've cut your plant and you carried it over with your thumb over the end, you'll stick it in through that piece of glove, okay, and down into the water, then it's ready to go. All right, at that point, you should probably take some pictures of it. Okay, you can take selfies with it too if you want, but don't use the selfies for, for the lab report. Okay, you need to take pictures of the plant because that way you can compare what it looked like at the beginning with what it looks like at the end. All right, you'll be able to see noticeable differences. So if I'm using, let's say, this particular leaf right here, okay, as my experiment, I would take a picture of the bottom and a picture of the top, right, so that on Thursday when I look at it again, I take exactly the same pictures, and then I can compare, hey, those red spots weren't there the first day, okay, or whatever. Everyone follow? Okay. What colors of food coloring should we use if we are given the following options? Red, blue, yellow, green. Thank you. Red or blue. If you use green, this is not going to work very well. In fact, I'm not even going to put green out because every time I put green out thinking people won't do that, they do it anyway. Plants are green. You won't see it. Okay, and these are kind of green and yellow. It just won't work. Okay, so please don't use the green dye. Okay, I won't even put it out. Just use the red and the blue. Okay, uh, you can even mix the red and the blue and make. Okay, if you want. All right, you don't need a heck of a lot of it. All right, For like four drops in a hundred mils of water is probably going to be lots. It'll be very very dark then. All right, but don't like make it syrupy. <laughs> Not that you could, but okay. You don't need like ten drops. Okay, that'll be way, way too much. Questions on what we're going to be doing when we get over there? Okay. The other thing is, I'm going to give you a piece of masking tape. Right. I want you to write your names on it and wrap it around the graduated cylinder when you've got the apparatus all set up. And the best place to do that is right at the base of the glove. They didn't do it on this one. They put their tape down here, but I would tape right there, right around the base of the glove to again help create a good seal against, against the glass. All right, so make sure your names are on it. That way, when you come back on Thursday and there's three classes worth of plants sitting on my windowsill, okay, you'll know which one's yours because you might not remember. Okay, they're going to all look kind of the same by then. All right. No, uh, let's say we're going to have groups of like four or five because... Again, I don't have a whole heck of a lot of plants here. I bought the last tropical plants they had last night. Okay, that's why they're all kind of different looking. Okay, um, so you can choose which plant you want to use, but remember, when you cut it, you need to make sure you get enough stem that you can put it into the water in your graduated cylinders. All right. Okay, um, because we're going to be using water over in the lab, leave the Chromebooks here, please. Okay, I don't want any of them getting wet. All right, so you guys kind of know what to do when we get over there. You're going to build those, those setups, okay? All right, let's head on over. So we've got them all set up now, okay? And we've got before pictures, and we've got our initial volume of water. Those are our important observations for this part, okay? On Thursday, we'll finish this up, okay? And it'll just be a matter of you're going to pour the water that it's in your graduated cylinder back into the big one so you know how much is left. Okay, you'll record that number and then you'll know the change in your volume and you'll take your after pictures of the plant so that you have comparison. The before and after pictures do need to be included in the lab report as your observations. They do not need to be a labeled proper lab diagram. They just need to be included as your observations. All right, uh, And then, of course, your volume, initial and final volume of water.
Okay, for the analysis stuff, which obviously you can't do yet because you don't have any data, okay, calculate the amount of water, explain any differences, um, compare the rate of transpiration with other groups. Now, when you do that, something you do need to keep in mind is that everyone has slightly different size of leaf, okay, or maybe from a different kind of plant because we had a few different kinds of plants today, okay, things like that. Keep it in mind. Try and compare with someone who had something like your setup. Okay, um, number two, what evidence do you have that water followed the path discussed in class? I would say for that question, you should most certainly be referring to the pictures you took, all right, especially the after pictures, all right, those will be a big part of answering that question, all right, and then number three talks about a prediction, predict the effect of adding salt to that water. So making the water a saline solution as opposed to a freshwater solution. How would that affect the plant? How would it affect the plant's ability to transport water? Okay, all of that kind of stuff. Thinking about how plants transport water and the mechanics of that. Okay, that's probably the most important question. Uh, then you're at your conclusion. Okay, based on what you see in the lab, can you accept or reject it? Okay, and your sources of error. All right. Um, things like that. Obviously, um, you know, there's a few little kind of imperfections in this lab. Right, that could be sources of error that are beyond your control, okay? and those will be things you would want to list. Okay, uh, and remember, you don't have to do the class discussion, but we will talk about those when I hand back the labs. And I think I made the due date for this April fifteenth. Is that right? That's what it says on there. Yeah. Okay. So that's after. That's the Wednesday when we come back from Easter. All right.